Has the jury reached a verdict in this case? No, Your Honor. We have not and we cannot. I must say I'm deeply disappointed by this failure of the jury. Manslaughter is a serious charge. This trial has lasted a full month. I'm sorry, Your Honor. There's always somebody who... Well, we'll never reach a unanimous decision with this jury. In view of the time this jury has deliberated without being able to agree, I see no alternative to the declaration of a mistrial. And I so declare at this time. Mr. Roberts. Yes, Your Honor? I hope you will reschedule the trial of this defendant at the earliest possible moment. I intend to do so, Your Honor. Very well. Good day, gentlemen. Find out what juror hung them up. I don't like the smell of this. I just want you to know you're only putting off the inevitable, Lucas. Hey, you're a bad loser, Mr. Roberts. Any? He? he hasn't lost yet. He hasn't won yet either. What happened? Too bad you couldn't get him off. What do you mean, too bad? You think I didn't try? Listen, Louie, I'm not going to explain these guys to you. I'm just going to tell you they're not going to be very happy. What's being happy got to do with it? I did what I was supposed to, didn't I? I never gave any right. guarantees. Right. Who gives guarantees in excited. this life? Don't get excited, Louie. The trouble with you is you always get excited. Look, George. They're going to pay us, aren't they? Don't worry. They'll pay us. They'll pay us. This portion of the Defenders presented by Clairol, creators of the exciting natural look and beauty, and tonight by Loving Care, the hair color lotion that colors only the gray. How long has it been since your black hair was really black? Dark, lustrous. Gray shows up so plainly in black hair. It says you're older than you are. Hate that gray? Wash it away. Wash years away with Loving Care Hair Color Lotion by Clairol in the new natural black shade. Loving Care colors only the gray. Washes it away without changing your natural hair color. Used about once a month, it keeps gray away and won't rub off, even in darkest new natural black. So if you hate that gray, wash it away with Loving Care. Looks so fresh and natural. Makes your husband feel younger too, just to look at you. Not a tint, better than a rinse. Hairdressers agree it's a fountain of youth for graying hair. Choose the tone most like your own. Shades range from palest blonde to new natural black. Loving Care Hair Color Lotion by Clairol. You were a good citizen and you lost a whole month's pay. For two whole weeks, you've been away, locked up in a hotel room with a jury. Well, listen, honey, when you get a call for jury duty, you have to go. It's a responsibility. Responsibility? You can't afford that kind of responsibility. What are you, a lawyer, a retired millionaire or something? Look, I wasn't the only working guy on that jury. There were a couple of telephone company guys. Don't talk to me about the telephone company people. Jack Barrett works for the telephone company. He loves jury duty. You know why? No. Eat the string beans, Lewis. They're full of vitamin C. I don't if like If you it. worked for the telephone company, you would get your full salary while you were on jury duty. That's pretty cushy, huh? Lewis, please eat those string beans. All right, all right. I'm eating them. You I'm work hard them. every day like a dog you work. If you don't uh, eat the proper foods, you'll be sick. And then where will we be? 
Horses work like horses, but they eat like horses, too. So eat. I'm not a horse. I don't know why they call horses dumb animals. I mean, what's so dumb about them? If you don't feed them, they don't work. Horses don't have ulcers. They never have heart attacks. And they don't lose a night's sleep worrying. You're early. What happened? They closed down the crap game? I haven't been near a crap game in over a year. You know that. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're studying brain surgery. You take off your coat, Georgie. Don't you sit at my table with your coat on. This ain't a cafeteria. The only brother I got in the whole world. When do I see him? When? When he's broke or in trouble. Otherwise, he's south for the winter or in the cooler for the summer. That'll be Janie and Pushy. I haven't done time in six years. I'll be right down. You playing bingo again? Yes, I'm playing bingo, and don't change the subject. I've got two men in my life. One of them is in the courtroom, always. I haven't even been pinched for over two years. Standing before the bar of justice, being accused of being a common gambler. And it don't make me feel very respectable to know that the blood of my blood, the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh has a police record as long as the Long Island Expressway. Six minor convictions, and she calls out a record. And all of a sudden, my husband is in court, making like King Solomon for a Supreme Court judge when he's a cabbie with a, a job and a wife and a, and a home to look after, only he's not around to look after any of that. I tell you, I've had a belly full of the law and the court, and I'd, I'd die happy if I never saw a lawyer or a court for the rest of my natural life. Put your dishes in the sink when you're through eating. If you want something more to eat, there's more in the refrigerator. But don't touch that cold chicken, because I'm saving that for tomorrow. Lewis? It's good to have you home. Oh, Lewis, when you're driving tonight, leave your window open. Don't forget. And don't eat any fried foods after midnight. You'll be poisoned. I don't know how you stand it with me. She's a good woman, a good wife. You're lucky to have a sister like that. Yeah, I know, I know. Did you get the money? Money. Lou, it is, uh, it's been kind of a complication. What do you mean, complication? You said... Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I said. But, you see, he only got a hung jury. He was expecting an acquittal. Is that my fault? You said that all they wanted me to do was vote not guilty, and I did. I voted not guilty 15 times. I let them swear at me and argue and carry on. Do you know that I lost a month's work? Did you hear Sally? She didn't talk just to hear herself talk. A month's work, nearly $600. Where is my $600? Never mind the $5,000 you're talking about. Just my $600. Louis, don't you think the money means something to me? My life depends on it. I got debts, really? Louis. You got debts. Now listen, just listen to reason, will Re you? What reason? All right, all right, all right. Suppose you bet on a horse and he runs horse. out of the money. Horse. What do you do? You pick something else. A horse? What are you talking I'll about? I'll tell you what I'm I'll talking about. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. If I don't get that money by tomorrow morning, I'm going to the district attorney about it and tell him about it. And I don't mean maybe. Louie, Louie, look, look, don't talk like that. These guys don't... These talk. guys. These guys are Welshes, George. Just cheap Welshes. And I'm not going to let them Welsh on me. Louie, now wait a minute. Don't talk like that. These guys don't play games. They can kill you. Ah, uh, kill me. Lots of things can kill me. I've nearly been killed a dozen times since I was a kid. A guy once held me up and I said, listen, you bum. I've got 60 bucks and if you want it, you'll have to kill me. And I meant it, George. I meant it. He nearly did kill me, but he didn't get the 60 bucks. Now I'm talking about 5,000 bucks that someone owes me. You tell those Welshing friends of yours, George, that Louis Brandt wants it, and he's going to get it. Louis, don't talk crazy. Look, in the first place... Tomorrow, I'm George, you. no later. I'm not warning you. I'm telling you.
Well, may I talk to Mr. Lucas, please? George Kemp. Hello. I'm Mr. Lucas. Georgie Kemp. Listen, um, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, I'm having a little trouble with my brother-in-law. Yeah. Well, I, I gave him the five, but uh, he wants more. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not keeping a nickel out of it. He's getting every penny. Well, I, I can't reason with him. I mean, he's threatening all kinds of crazy things, like going to the DA and all that. Well, I don't think he's that kind of guy, but... How much? Well, I figure a, a grand ought to do it. Uh, two for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can meet with Tucky. Where? About an hour. Okay. Uh, th thanks a lot, Mr. Lucas. Uh, thank you. Cheers. Oh, I wasn't expecting anybody. Oh, well, I should hope not. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Preston? Yes? I want you to tell Steve Lucas that it don't scare me. It don't scare me at all. Steve Lucas, what's this all about? You know Lucas. You defended him. Yes, I know Lucas, but I don't know what you're talking about. George is in the hospital. They beat him up to scare me. Oh, keep your voice nice. Now, who's in the hospital? George Cap, my brother-in-law. Steve Lucas's hoods beat him up to scare me. Why would he want to scare you? Police, Mr. Preston. You are Mr. Kenneth Preston, aren't you? Yes, I am. And this man is Lewis Bryant, isn't he? Yes, sir. That's who I am. All right, Lewis, let's go. District Attorney will want to talk to you. You better get your coat, Mr. Preston. He'll want to talk to you, too. What's he want to talk to me for? Ken, what is it? <laughs> well, Judy, why does he want to see me now? I think he'll have a charge of jury tampering to discuss with him. Jury tampering? You were the juror in the Lucas trial. Of course I was. You know me. All right. Well... Let's go. Listen, Judy, I think you better call my father. Tell him I'm at the DA's office and uh, tell him I'm in a bit of trouble. It takes time. You'll learn. I can't handle these cigarettes anymore. Yeah, try one of mine. Cool? Try them. Your cigarettes not tasting cool enough till you come up to cool. With rich tobaccos, pure white filter, extra coolness too. Feel extra coolness in your throat as cool comes through for you. You sure know something about cigarettes. Now let's see you run that crane. You'll be smoking cool, cool all the time when you come up to cool. Come all the way up to cool. Feel extra coolness in your throat. Smoke cool with the pure white filter. I'm warning you, Lewis, that if you lie to me now, you're in serious trouble, big trouble. You've never been to prison before, have you? No, sir. I've been hacking for 15 years. I never was in trouble in my life. Well, you're in trouble now, fella. Accepting a bribe is a felony for a juror. Not only can you go to jail for it, but you lose your hacky's license. You won't even work when you come out. Please, Mr. Roberts. I'm telling you right now. The only thing you can do is to cooperate fully with this office. No lies. No holding back. Full cooperation, do you understand that? Sure, Mr. Moffat, sure. Okay, now I'll be frank with you, Lewis. I don't want to put you in jail. You've committed a crime, but you've got a clean record. Now, if you cooperate with me, I can try to get you a break. If not, if anything, anything, Mr. Roberts, I'll swear I'll do anything. Okay. Yes. Were you offered money to vote not guilty in the trial of Steve Lucas? Yes, sir. How much money? $5,000. Who offered you the money? Uh, it was Lucas, wasn't it? No, sir. Well, somebody who worked for him. Yes, sir. Who? Uh, 
I don't know the guy's name. Now, you're lying to me, Brass. No, sir, I swear to you, Mr. Roberts, I swear it. All right, let's forget the whole thing. Okay. If you want to be a hero, be a hero. You're going to wind up the fall guy. Mr. Mr. Roberts, give me a chance. A chance to do what? To lie out of this thing? No, sir, it's too late now. Oh, okay, okay. I went to the press and the partner for the payoff. What? Yes, sir. Well, who offered you the bribe? It was Lucas, wasn't it? No, sir. Uh, it was uh, Lucas's lawyers. What? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 just one. Just one. Which one? Um, the young one. Uh, the one whose apartment I went to. Kenneth Preston? Yes, sir, that's it. Kenneth Preston, that's right. He's the one. Kenneth Preston? Yes, sir, Mr. Roberts. I swear it, that's the truth. Why would I go to the uh, uh, Preston apartment unless it was for a payoff? I don't know what Lucas had to do with it, but the man who promised me the money was Kenneth Preston. He's the one. Yes, sir, I swear to that, Mr. Roberts. He's lying, Art. I'm surprised you even listened to him. I have the jurist signed statements. You can't believe it. No, I don't believe it. Why was Bran at your apartment? Well, I don't know, Art. It wasn't clear. He comes up to pass along some message to Steve Lucas. Something about his brother-in-law beaten up. He wanted me to tell him that he Why was Why did you ever admit know. him to your apartment? Well, look, he's standing out there talking about a client of mine, and it seemed a common courtesy to let him courtesy. in. Courtesy? Do you know if a juror came to my house following a trial, I'd slam the door in his face? Unless I had a dozen witnesses around me. I didn't recognize him as a juror. I didn't recognize him. I've seen him every day for nearly a month in that jury box. And okay. you didn't recognize him. Seeing him without all the right, other All right, all right, all right. You don't have enough for an indictment, so what do you plan to do? I'm afraid that I'm going to have to bring this up before the grievance committee of the Bar Association, Larry. You can't be serious. You don't believe for a moment that Ken was... I told you that I didn't. But that may not be enough for the press or the bar association. Now, they may not believe that Kenneth bribed the juror. But if they believe that he was bribed by your client and Ken had knowledge, just the knowledge of what happened, they'll disbar him. I wish I didn't have to do it, Larry. Believe me. I wish I didn't have to. Well, now, what I don't understand is this. If there isn't enough evidence to take Ken to court to stand trial, then why should there be enough evidence to take him before this Bar Association Committee? That's because the laws which govern attorneys are tougher than laws which govern other men. Two sets of laws? In fact, yes. An ordinary citizen can get away with a minor infraction with a fine, but an attorney can be suspended or even disbarred. But that doesn't sound reasonable. <laughs> After all, isn't this bar association composed only of lawyers? I mean, they'll recognize the truth the minute you tell them. It's sure, as simple as that. But people are presumed innocent in the eyes of the law. <sighs> Judy, a bar association committee hearing isn't like a criminal trial in court. They don't require corroboration to find me guilty, and they don't need proof beyond a reasonable doubt. They don't even have to believe that I bribed him myself. All they have to believe is that I knew he was bribed before the trial started. Well, how can they possibly believe that? They try to be fair, sure, but uh, they choose to believe Brad rather than me, then I'm cooked and uh, that's it. Well, you're a smart lawyer. You can convince them of anything. That's open to a little bit of question. All right, well, suppose they don't believe you. Now, how much could they fine you? Fine me? I'm not getting a traffic ticket. My license can be revoked. You mean take away your right to work? Yes, indeed. Well, that's unconstitutional, I think. The practice of law isn't a right. It's a privilege, and that's why lawyers are licensed, and that's why they can revoke that privilege. Attorneys have to be like Caesar's wife, beyond suspicion. You must be targets for all kinds of wild charges by people. Yes, indeed. When I first started to practice, I had a client in criminal action. I neglected to get my fee in advance. I presented my bill. He said, mark it paid in full, or I'll go to the Bar Association and complain that you solicited my case. Well, I decided to take the loss rather than risk suspension or possible disbarment. And they can disbar Ken. Well, you, you can't let that happen. You just can't. I'll do my best. Ken knows that. Any milk in the refrigerator? Yeah, I think it's something. A little strawberry yogurt, too, if you want that. Help yourself. 
I get you anything? You ought to try to get some sleep. talk to you. You don't have to talk to me, Mr. Brandt, but I want you to know that I'm here with the knowledge and consent of the Bar Association and the District Attorney. Now, this is a very serious accusation you brought against my son. If the Bar Association so much as thinks that he came up and said hello to you after you received your jury summons, he can be disbarred for life. Do you know what disbarment means for an attorney? It means he can't practice the profession for which he spent six years training himself. Now, he's not only my son and my partner, but he's a very capable attorney. He has a long, long, useful future ahead of him. My son loves the law. It's his whole life. He's 28 years old, Mr. Brandt. If he's disbarred, he has no future. Oh, we're very sorry, but there's nothing we can do about that. Mr. Brandt, my son's life, literally speaking, is in your hands. You must help me. What do you mean, help you? You want me to say I lied. That's what you want. That's what you no, want. No, no, no. I want you me. to tell the truth. For instance, what connection is there between your brother-in-law and Steve Lucas? No, no connection. They don't know. They don't know each other. When you came to my son's apartment, you told him that Steve Lucas's hoods had beaten him up. Now, what did you mean by that? Oh, well, that's true. My brother did get beaten up. He, he was even found in an alley. Did Steve Lucas order that beating? I don't know if he did or not. When you came to my son's apartment, you said... I said, I said, I said a lot of things, mister. Look, I don't have to talk to you. See? You're not here by my invitation. You're not a cop or anything, are you? I don't have to talk to you if I don't want to, and I don't want to. I saw it all over, and I don't want to talk to you. I was hoping. You were hoping. You can go right on hoping. The DA says I don't have to talk to you, so I won't. When you get in front of that committee, you're going to have to talk to me. You're going to have to talk to me and answer my questions. And you're going to have to tell the truth. I'll tell the truth. When I get you in front of that committee, I'm going to turn you inside out. And if there's any truth in you, I'm going to drag it out of you no matter what it takes. I don't like lawyers, and I don't like you. And I don't like people who scam me either. Get out of my house. I'm sorry about your son, but I think you better leave. You have no right to get my husband so upset and so excited. I mean, for a man with a lot of education, you certainly don't have very good manners. You have no right to treat people the way you do. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Mrs. Brandt. But I'm not only a lawyer. I'm also a father, and no one is going to hurt my son, not if I can help it. So we start without Lucas, you. I'm not going to fence with you. How did you bribe Lewis Brandt? What are you talking about? He says he was bribed, and I believe him. And the grievance committee of the Bar Association will believe him. The question is, by whom? Look, Preston, I hired you to defend me. You've been paid. If you defend me in my retrial, you get paid again. What are you squawking about? You knew I was no lily when you took on my case. Lucas, you and I both know my son had nothing to do with that bribe. I need your help to prove it. Look, Preston, would I go to all the trouble and expense to hire straight-up guys like you and your son and then what, try to play either one of you for patsies? Mr. Lucas, defending you in court is one thing. It's your right and my privilege. You're entitled to an adequate defense and I'm entitled to an adequate fee. But bribing a juror is quite another matter. I wouldn't think you'd be that stupid. Maybe you're not. Maybe something backfired on you, I don't know. But I mean to find out. If you don't help me now, I'll find out how that bribe goes back to you, and I'll see to it that you go to prison for it. Gee, Counselor, I wish I could help you. That lousy little tout. I should have had him killed, not just clobbered. Now, listen, Tucky. You make sure that Brad sticks to his story. Get the word to that little creep, Georgie Cap, to pass it on to his brother-in-law. They both stuck their necks out so far, they ought to be chopped off. If they pull me into this, tell them they can go buy a group burial plot. Well? You're finished. How does headache pain affect you? 
my headaches, they seem to come up the back of my neck or each side. It comes around the side of the head and just seems like it meets here and then goes back down. It comes like two bull goats. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I've had headaches that uh, want to lift the top of my head off. For headaches that really bother you, take new Excedrin, the extra strength pain reliever. Look, this is the formula for aspirin. Even the heavily advertised combination of ingredients tablet merely adds caffeine to aspirin. But Excedrin has more quantity and more kinds of ingredients. You get quick relief, long-lasting relief, a tension reliever, and antidepressant. Tablet for tablet, Excedrin is 50% stronger than aspirin for relief of headache pain. The one I do want relief, I want relief. Excedrin gave me this. New Excedrin, the extra strength pain reliever. This portion of the Defenders presented by Excedrin. New Excedrin, the extra strength pain reliever from Bristol Myers. This portion of the Defenders is brought to you by the Allstate Insurance Companies, whose policies now include protection for your home and your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. Hello, I'm Ed Reimers for Allstate. And with me are good drivers, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Dowden. Uh, Mr. Dowden's a medical student, his wife, a teacher. And they recently switched to Allstate. While I was in college, my father had been paying for my insurance. But when we were married and started out on our own, and the bills came to me, I was shocked. All the rates for folks under 25, like the Dowdens, are high. I spoke to my brother about it. He said he got low rates at Allstate, and they gave him good service on a claim. Both the Dowdens have good driving records, so they qualified for Allstate's special good driver rates for young marrieds. Uh, were the savings worthwhile, Mr. Dowden? We are now paying Allstate $48 less than we would have had to pay the other company for the same coverage on our car. Thank you, folks. Why don't you check with Allstate to find out what savings you may be able to make? You're in good hands with Allstate. Here's the summary on George Cap. Thanks. What do you know about him besides his official record? Well, he's a small-time gambler, small-time policy banker, small-time uh, loan shark. He's small-time, period. Could there be any connection between him and Steve Lucas? I don't know. Why was he beaten up? Claims because he welched on a bet. Do you believe him? I don't know. Maybe there was a connection between him and Steve Lucas. Look, Larry, uh... George is a small-time punk. Now, he and Lucas wouldn't associate. But suppose George's brother-in-law was on a jury that was trying Steve Lucas for manslaughter. Would they associate then? Oh, george has got a good eye for a quick buck. He could see the possibilities in a situation like that. And seeing the possibilities, would he know how to get in touch with Lucas to propose that he buy his brother-in-law's votes? Oh, that he'd be able to do. But suppose you're an ordinary citizen who normally has nothing to do with criminals. You want to get in touch with Lucas, a man as important as Lucas. Now, how would you go about it? You couldn't. You know, people like Lucas aren't listed in the yellow pages under gangster. They don't have mailing addresses in their names, and they don't have phones in their names or bank accounts in their names. They operate through fronts to other people. Now, you literally couldn't get in touch with Lucas unless you knew someone who knew someone who knew someone, and so forth. Why do you ask? I was wondering why Brant went to my son's house to give him a message for Lucas. Why didn't he go directly to Lucas? He didn't know how to get in touch with him. Maybe Lucas was trying to frighten Brant. By beating up his brother-in-law? Yeah, why not? <laughs> they don't work that way. They don't beat up A to scare B. They beat up B to scare the stuffing out of B. It's as direct and unimaginative as that. They don't use indirect methods. B is the guy they belt, and they belt him so hard he never forgets it. I got beat up because I welched on a bet. I... Not exactly welsh, I just... Just couldn't pay. Your brother-in-law says that Steve Lucas had you beaten up. Uh, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He evidently felt strongly enough about it to go to my son's apartment. Why would he do that? I don't know. Care to guess why he might have gone there? Louis, uh, it's a big-hearted slob. He, uh, 
He knew I needed money. And uh, maybe he went to see his son to try and sell his will. After the trial? Maybe he had it in his mind all the time. Oh, he's a tough guy to figure. He's, uh, he's deep. He doesn't talk much, but he's, uh, he's a deep thinker. Do you believe Lewis sold his vote on that jury? He says he did. Guess he did. But not through my son. Oh, Mr. Preston, I don't, I don't know. Like I say, Louis hard. Hard to figure. He's, he's deep, you know. He's, he's deep. I'll tell you one thing, though. Louis's not a liar. Oh. You say that Mr. Brad acted as though his mind were made up when he first entered the jury room. Yes, sir. Is there anything that he said or did that gave you that impression? Lots of things. For instance, he wouldn't answer any questions about why he felt Lucas was not guilty. I mean, you would ask him why he felt the way he did, and he would just shrug his shoulders and say, I got a right, haven't I? Did you try to persuade him? Try. We broke our heads on him. He was just stubborn. Did Mr. Brandt try to persuade you? No, sir, not once. How many ballots did you take in your deliberation? Sixteen in all, in ten days. Were they secret ballots? After the first three, they were open ballots. Did Mr. Brandt ever change his vote? No, sir. It was not guilty from the first ballot to the last. No, sir. While under my surveillance, and as far as my observation is concerned, Brandt didn't make contact with anyone connected with the Lucas case, except Mr. Kenneth Preston. Did you search Mr. Brandt after taking him into custody? Yes, sir, we did. Did you find any sum of money on him? $25 in his wallet. No other money or check or other negotiable item indicating that he'd been paid? No, sir. Mr. Brandt, when were you selected as a juror in the case of the state of New York versus Steve Lucas? I got the jury notice in the mail to come down on Friday, December 6th. Did you speak to anyone about your jury duty before you went to the courthouse? Well, I told my wife about it, and I told the cab supervisor about it. But not anyone else connected with the Steve Lucas trial? No, sir. You had no knowledge as to which case you would be assigned? Oh, no. The jury business is on the up and up, strictly. It was after I was picked, you see. All right, Mr. Brand, tell it in your own way. Well, after they picked me for jury duty, they told me to go home and come back for the trial uh, Monday morning, uh, 10 o'clock. That evening, I got a call from a man who asked me if I want to make $5,000. I thought it was a gag or something I was going to hang up. But the man said he knew I was picked for jury duty for the Steve Lucas trial, and I could make myself some easy money. Uh, all I had to do was uh, vote not guilty, and he would pay me at the end of the trial. And did the man calling identify himself? Mm, not at first. Then he said that he was the, the lawyer for Steve Lucas. There were two attorneys representing Mr. Lucas. Did he say which one he was? Uh, he said uh, he was, was Kenneth Preston. Did you object? to this plan in any way? Or did you say that you thought it was wrong or illegal or dangerous? Well, I haven't had much experience with uh, trials and juries and all that, uh, uh, but uh, I, I asked him, uh, is this okay? I mean, uh, can I get in any trouble? And what did your caller say? Well, he said uh, it happens all the time, only the public don't know about it. I remember he said, uh, supposing I hear all the testimony and I uh, honestly vote not guilty. Wouldn't I be a fool to do something for nothing that I could uh, get paid for? And did this argument convince you? I'm afraid it didn't. I was kind of leery about the whole proposition. But uh, he kept on talking. He's a good talker. He, he said he looked into my record and he knew that uh, I never got in trouble or anything like that. I had a good reputation and uh, nobody would find out uh, if I said nothing and I would be a lot richer. He said a fellow like me, uh, he knew a fellow like me don't have much dough and, uh, and we're getting on in years and we got to be thinking about the time when uh, I'm not young enough to uh, push a hack anymore. I mean, uh, you, you can't uh, hack much after 50, you know. Some fellows do, but uh, uh, it's, it's not an easy job and, uh, and I ain't the strongest guy in the world. Well, it was uh, pretty convincing, you know. I must say... Uh, he was, uh, he was getting home to me. Uh, I ain't managed to save uh, much money. I mean, how can you when you're just a hacky? That five grand it could be very important to my wife and me. I mean, it could 
be the difference between uh, staying in New York and maybe moving to Arizona. Uh, I, I, I need that uh, dry climate. I, I, got a, I got a condition of the chest. Anyway, uh, he said if I agreed uh, that uh, we couldn't be seen talking to one another once the trial started. And then you agreed to sell your vote on the jury? Not right then and there. I, I said I needed time to, to think it over. Uh, the lawyer said, okay, uh, uh, I, I, I could sleep on it, and uh, he would call me in the morning. And then he asked me not to talk it over with anyone else. And did you talk it over with anyone else? Oh, no. I mean, someone asks you uh, to keep something to yourself, you don't go shooting off your mouth. And did Mr. Kenneth Preston call you the following morning? No, sir. I called him first. Why did you call him? To tell you the truth, I didn't sleep much that night just thinking about it. That five grand looked bigger and bigger as the night went on. About, oh, about six o'clock in the morning, I made up my mind uh, I would be a chump if I passed up this easy money. I wanted to call him at six o'clock in the morning, but I stopped myself. Uh, I, I figured that he wouldn't be very happy if I woke him up. You know, so I waited around for an hour and a half, and. Then I called him at home. At home? Did he give you his number? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I looked it up in the phone book. I got it written down. Yeah. And the man who answered that number is the same man who spoke to you? Oh, yeah, sure. He, he knew me, and I recognized his voice. And what did you say? I asked him if the deal for the five grand was still on, and he said, yeah, sure, do I want to make it? And I said, uh, yes, I, I do want to make it, and uh, I would appreciate it. I said, uh, I'm sorry I woke you up. He said, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, you're doing the right thing. You won't regret it. Were you ever paid? No, sir, not a dime. I waited and I waited. <coughs> Never got a dime. That's why I went to his apartment to, to get the money. Is this the testimony you gave the district attorney's office? Yes, sir. Did the district attorney explain to you that this testimony could put you in prison? Yes, he told me about it. Aside from the fact that you feel Mr. Kenneth Preston cheated you out of money that you feel he owes you, have you any other reason for giving this testimony? Oh, no, sir. You never knew Mr. Kenneth Preston or Mr. Lawrence Preston before the Lucas trial or had any dealings with them as individuals or as attorneys in any way? I never saw either one of them before the trial. It's, uh, that's the truth, the whole truth. So help me God. Your witness, Mr. Preston. I have no questions for this witness. We'll take a ten minute recess. I'm Ed Reimers with news about home protection. Now from Allstate comes homeowner's insurance at ordinary fire insurance prices. That's right. For about the cost of most other companies' ordinary fire insurance, an Allstate homeowner's policy covers you for fire, hurricane, hailstorm, burglary, explosion, holdup, pickpockets, pilferage, looting, riot, smoke, damage by thieves, lightning, vandalism, a car or plane that hits your house, injury to visitors, even if they sue. The Allstate homeowner's policy is one package of protection that includes fire insurance on the house and most belongings, plus theft insurance and comprehensive personal liability protection. One policy covers all those things I mentioned. It's homeowner's insurance at ordinary fire insurance prices. You're in good hands with Allstate. Mrs. Brandt, are you the wife of Louis Brandt, who has just testified in this hearing? Yes, I am. Do you love your husband? Yes, I do, very much. Do you know him pretty well? Oh, yes, I, I, I know him pretty well. Are you surprised to learn he agreed to accept money for voting not guilty in a jury trial? Yes, yes, I was surprised to learn that. It's not like him to do anything dishonest, is it? No, it isn't. I agree with you, Mrs. Brandt. I think your husband is an honest man. I've looked into his background, and I find him to be an honorable, hard-working, and upright man. So far as I can tell, he has never done a dishonest thing before in his life. That's right, he didn't. Now, Mrs. Brandt, do you know a George Cap? This is my brother. My maiden name is Cap. Do you know your brother very well? I ought to. He's my brother. What sort of man is he? Well, 
He's uh, better than a lot of people I could name and no worse than uh, others. He has a long police record. Shall I read it to you? No, you don't need to go into that. I, I know. But he couldn't help himself. He was... Uh... My folks died when he was a kid. We were dragged up like a couple of alley cats, not children. I mean, it's rough being an orphan. It's very rough. And uh, Georgie got the worst of it. So when you want to knock my brother, just remember his childhood. He had none. Mrs. Brandt, suppose your brother George had been the one to accept money for selling his vote in a jury trial. Would you be surprised? I mean, would you be as surprised as you were when you learned your husband had? Well, the way you put it, uh, I mean, uh, Lewis wouldn't do a thing like that, but uh, Georgie might do it quicker, yes. Is your husband a soft touch? Yes, he is. He's, uh, if you give him a sob story, he'll give you anything. He's too soft. M Mr. Preston, I can't follow the testimony or the questioning. Where is it leading? Gentlemen, the whole case against my son rests upon the testimony of one damaging witness. I feel that we must inquire into his character and credibility. Now, if the committee will bear with me, I shall delineate his true character and the real motives for his testimony. Proceed, Mr. Preston. Mrs. Brandt, you see a great deal of your brother George Cap. Well, uh, he's in and out of the house. Does he visit regularly? No, not regular. Generally when he wants something? Is that something often money? Yeah, well, yes, it is uh, often money. Do you give him money? Well, where would I get money? But your husband gives him money, doesn't he? Well, it's, uh, it's like I say, uh, Lewis is too soft with George. I mean, if uh, George wants money, he can always get it from my husband. I have told my husband, I told Lewis a hundred times, don't give him money. I mean, if he wants food or clothing or shelter or dental work, uh, we'll give it to him. But, uh... You know, we'd take the clothes off our backs, but uh, as far as giving my brother money is concerned, uh, you don't do it. I mean, uh, it's like spitting in the ocean. Don't change the ocean. So George found out that he couldn't get money from you, but he could from your husband. Tell me, before your husband had been chosen for jury duty, how often had you seen him? Uh, you mean my brother, George. Oh, uh, well, like I said, a bad penny in and out of the house. Well, did you see him every week? Twice a week? No, twice a year was more like it. And after your husband went on jury duty, how often did you see him? Well, he was practically living with us. That was a big change for your brother, wasn't it? Well, he had his reasons. He was hiding out, wasn't he? He, uh, owed some bookies some money. A lot of money? About a thousand dollars. And the bookies wanted the money? Yeah, they, of course they wanted it. Uh, they threatened to kill Georgie if they didn't get it. Were you worried about this, you and your husband? Well, of course we were worried. I mean, you don't want to see your own flesh and blood lying in some alley with a knife in his back, do you? Did your brother find the thousand dollars to pay the bookies? No, of course not. Would they have uh, beaten him half to death if he had paid them? He was beaten? Yeah, he sure was. He's still in the hospital. Then your brother was beaten up by bookies to whom he owed a thousand dollars because he didn't pay them? Yes, yes, that's what I said. He still owes them so far as you know? Well, I guess so. Do you think it possible that your husband agreed to sell his vote on the jury to raise money to help your brother out in this problem? Yeah. To tell you the truth, that's what I do believe. Now, you heard your husband testify that he didn't talk this proposition over with anyone. Oh, well, he didn't talk it over with me. But your brother was living with you at the time your husband said he received a phone call from Kenneth Preston, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Now, do you think it's possible that your husband might have talked this matter over with George? Now, he would be worried and upset, not knowing whether he ought to do this dishonest thing. But he knew that his brother-in-law desperately needed a thousand dollars. Do you think the two of them might have talked it over late that Friday night? The uh, truth, Mrs. Brandt, is very important. Yes, I, I think they might have. He might. And George would urge him to accept it, wouldn't he? George would say, now, don't be a chump. There's five grand dumped into your lap just like that. Don't pass it up. You need it and I need it. George could say that, couldn't he? Yes, he, he, he could. Now, Mrs. Brandt, we both know your husband is an honorable man. Does it sound reasonable to you that he'd listen to some stranger on the phone, propose an illegal scheme, and be convinced by that stranger? Now, I know you've described your husband as a soft-hearted man, but he's no fool, is he? No, he's not. He's not. So that if he agreed to do this criminal thing, 
Something or someone else must have persuaded him. Someone close to him. Now, knowing both men, your husband and your brother, you believe that your husband would never have gone into this without your brother's pushing him. Now, I don't want to hurt you, Mrs. Brandt, but we need to know the truth. Do you believe that your brother knew what was going on? Yes, I do. I think he must have. You saw your husband and your brother in close conversation quite a bit, didn't you? Yes, I did. You suspected something was happening, didn't you? Yes, but not this. I, sw I never suspected this. I did. Now you know what they were discussing, don't you? The $5,000 promised to your husband for committing a felony. Louis, I told you he'd get you into trouble. I told you. Now, just one more question, Mrs. Brent. Do you know the name of the bookie your brother owed that $1,000 to? Oh, uh... <laughs> Philly. Big Philly. Something. Uh... I, I never knew his last name. My brother used to just... talk about Big Philly this and Big Philly that. Thank you, Mrs. Brandt. I have no more questions of this witness. Thank you, Mrs. Brandt. Gentlemen, at this time, with your permission, I'd like to put an unscheduled witness on the stand. Very well, Mr. Preston. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence that you shall give in this matter to this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name, address, and your occupation. Philip Wilson, 622 East 151st Street. Your occupation? Entrepreneur. Yeah, what he said. Mr. Wilson, are you also known as Big Philly? Yeah, but I've lost weight. May I simply, for the purposes of identification, ask Mr. Brandt a question? You may, Mr. Preston. Mr. Brandt, would you please rise? Will you look at the witness? Is this the man known to you as Philip Wilson, otherwise known as Big Philly? Yes, sir, that's the man. Is he also the man to whom your brother-in-law is indebted for $1,000? Well, that's, that's what George told me, but I, I didn't actually see him lose the money. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Wilson, we won't go into the nature of your business. All that concerns us is that you have had business dealings with George Cap, have you not? Yes, I have. As a result of these business dealings, Mr. George Cap became indebted to you? He got into me for some cash. How much money was it? $420. We've heard testimony that the amount was $1,000 he owed. A grand? What do you think I am, simple or something? Do you think I let a little creep like Georgie the Cap get on my tab for a G? He wouldn't live to see the day. He wouldn't have gotten onto my tape for four dollars, on four hundred. Except that I was sick with the flu, flat on my back. My brother-in-law Seymour was running the book. I mean the business. Does he still owe you the money? No. Paid it off two weeks ago. The whole four hundred and twenty dollars, down to the last nickel. At one time? Yeah, well, he had quite a roll on him, huh? A couple of thousand, at least. A lot of money. Do you know where he got it? Who knows? But a couple of thousand dollars, at least. I don't think he's seen that much money since the day he was born. Speaking as a man who knows about these things, do you think he won it in a game somewhere? Craps, cards? When somebody wins in this town, you hear about it. And when a little operator like Georgie Cap wins, you're bound to hear about it. He didn't win it. Maybe he found it. But in any case, he had a lot of money on him. A lot. Do you know why George Cap was beaten up? Probably flashing the money around. Some guy saw it and they jumped him. That happens from time to time. Thank you. I have no further questions of this witness. Excuse me, Mr. Wilson. Are you a bookmaker? I think it would be safe to assume that George Capp's business dealings with this witness were in that general category. Yeah, whatever he said. Thank you. That's all. I have one more witness, gentlemen. If you'll give me a few moments, I'll have him brought right down. If the committee will grant me a few words while we're waiting for the witness, I think I've established at least the possibility that Mr. Brandt agreed to accept a bribe for his vote on the jury at the urgings of at least one other person, his brother-in-law, Mr. George Cap, and that the reason he acceded to these urgings was the belief that Cap owed a considerable sum of money to Big Philly Wilson. 
I don't believe Mr. Brandt would have done what he did, except under these compelling circumstances, loyalty to his wife and fear for his brother-in-law's physical safety. I think Mr. Brandt's motives for acting as he did were not those of greed or personal gain. But you are about to meet a man whose only motive is greed, whose only... What is your name? Cap. George Cap. Mr. Cap has already been sworn. You are Mrs. Lewis Brandt's brother, are you not? I am. Mr. Cap, we understand you were severely beaten two weeks ago. You bet I was. You can see that, can't you? Do you know why you were beaten? I owe money to some bookies. And you were beaten because you wouldn't pay them? I couldn't pay them. How much money was it? That was, it still is, a thousand bucks. Where do you expect to get the money? How do I know where? Maybe, maybe I'll inherit it or something. You don't seem very worried about it. What do you mean I don't seem worried? I'm worried, buddy. I'm worried. I was almost killed for it. I'd better get it. You can always pay them out of the money you got for your brother-in-law, can't you? Big Philly Wilson told us you had a real roll on you, a couple of thousand dollars at least. Where did you get the money? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Big Philly Wilson sat in the very chair you're sitting in now, not three minutes ago, and swore that you owed him $420, not a thousand, and that you had paid him back, and you had a large sum of money left, a couple of thousand dollars at least. He's lying! Why should he lie? What has he got to gain? You've paid him back. You're the one who's lying, aren't you? You're lying to this committee, and you lied to your own brother-in-law. I ain't lying to anybody, and I, I never lied to my brother-in-law. You received $5,000 to obtain his vote in the jury box, and then you've welched on Lewis Brandt. Five thousand? I've never seen $5,000 in my life. And when you lied to him, he demanded that you go back and get the money. Oh, say, it, it's not true. It's not true. And then greed, simple greed decided that you might be able to expand that 5000 into something bigger. It's not true! So you went to someone and tried to shake them down with a story that Lewis Brandt wanted more money. That's not and true. And that's why you were beaten up because they saw through your little shit. It's not true. It's not you true. You lied to me. You lied to me. Now, wait a minute, Louis. You lied I, I, to me. I can explain Alice it. Alice said you were no good, but I trusted you. I trusted you. Are you testifying, Mr. Brandt? You bet I am. It was his idea from the beginning. I, I He said we turn a good dollar, something for you, something for me. I, I never wanted that kind of money, but he started crying what they do to him, how he needed a thousand dollars. Where was I going to get a thousand dollars for him? But he cried, he cried, they'll kill him. So I went along with it. Were you ever approached by Kenneth Preston? in connection with this bribe attempt. No, sir, he had nothing to do with it. I was scared. I didn't know where to go. This punk was in the hospital. Uh, he, I, it was, I thought it was because he was doing something, something for me. He never did anything for me or anyone else. Just him, just Georgie. Number one, you're number nothing. That's what you are. Nothing, number nothing. Don't. Come on. It is the decision of the committee to unanimously dismiss the complaint. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Cash, I want to see you. Hey, Sally, you don't understand. Leave us alone, Georgie. I never want to see you again. Let's go. Mrs. Brant. I'm sorry, uh... Well, finding out that Georgie was no good isn't exactly a news bulletin, but, uh... It's hard to get used to. Good luck, Mr. Brandt. I didn't mean to harm you, boy. I want him to know that. I didn't mean to harm anybody. Hey, when you two finish congratulating each other, I'll buy you a victory dinner. Mommy, my blanket is scratchy. Dear, I washed it, and she says it isn't soft and cuddly now. Oh, Mother, I bet you forgot Final Touch. Final Touch? I'll show you. 
It's the new fabric softener. Makes everything soft enough to cuddle. Feel this. Mm. But I tried a softener once and my wash looked dingy. This towel is so white. Sure. Final Touch is the first fabric softener that whitens as it softens. Only Final Touch contains Solium Plus, the best whitener in any fabric softener. The ultraviolet light test proves it. This new towel was rinsed in the other leading softener. This new towel in Final Touch. You can see that Final Touch whitens best by far. And some things I don't even iron. Stop when a wash is this soft and white too. I'm sold. Final Touch whitens as it softens. This is E.G. Marshall. This woman is a few moments away from committing a senseless murder. A senseless murder against this man. Doctor or no doctor, do you think that I can forget what Anna did? I want her to be found guilty. I want her to lose. She's had two psychiatrists examine her. Let them be her experts, not me. He's a bad man, Mr. Presson. An evil man. He took advantage of Anna. Specifically, what advantage? Didn't Anna tell you about her and Schubert? I'd rather hear your version. They were lovers. Oh, now, uh, this dress you're wearing, it's, it's blue. Do you think blue suits you? I don't know. I thought you... You thought I what? You said... You said I what? Does the fact that I don't think blue suits you, does that upset you? I don't give a damn what you think. See the Hidden Fury, our next exciting case. It stars E.G. Marshall, Susan Oliver, Joseph Anthony, Ben Piazza, and me, Bob Reed. This portion of the Defenders presented by new Final Touch Fabric Softener. The fabric softener that whitens as it softens. <laughs>